Welcome back to Cradle to Grave R. My name is Mark Gingras, and today I'm going to show you how to actually load an Excel file into R, use it, keep the conditional format and keep the data, add to it, and then spit it back out as another file. Just to show you that we can do that. If you haven't watched the other Open XLSX or Excel related tutorials, there's a playlist for it, so just look for that. Um, but yeah, I realized that I didn't show you how to actually load a Excel file. So let's just go ahead and do that right now. And I'll walk you through it. First, we've got to actually uh, not open. Uh, we have to have our library, L-I-B-R-A-R-Y, open XLSX. I am terrible today with typing. So we load the library. And let me tell you this. This is going to be easy. I'll probably go on a little rant right after this just to give you guys some updates on other things. But let's just create a workbook, right? We want to create a workbook called WB, and we will load that workbook. So load workbook, and it, here's how simple it is. I have a workbook. I'm going to jump over to my uh, project file, the project directory, the default where things are going to be found within this R script. Um, I have a condition one. XLSX previous tutorials we created this so let's double up, let's double click on it of course I modified it slightly I added a tab um, but here we have some highlighting we have some data we've got I wonder if it captures I doubt this if it captures that position e10 that's selected that would be interesting if it does or did I just select that let me close this out let's check it out every little thing counts yep all right so it starts off on sheet one h10. That's how it started, okay? So <laughs> let's just check that. Try to remember that and let's see. But anyways, you can see I have two sheets. This one's not named, but I've got some highlighting, some different fonts. Let's see if we can duplicate that. So which lo which which um, notebook? We want to load condition one dot XLSX. I hit tab to auto-populate. Boom. And it does not give me an arrow. But you can see up here in the top right, I have a workbook object that's created. Cool, that's a good start. We can type in the word WB and just do command enter and you can kind of get a, let me get rid of this. You can kind of get an idea of what it captured just in text. So it says, hey, here's sheet one, here's sheet two, here's a couple custom things going on, here's some order. But there's actually way more to it than that that is, that is captured. But that kind of gives you a quick high level view of it. So we can do, what are the names of the workbook? We can do that, and you can see down here to the bottom left, condition one, sheet one, that's true. And for an example, we'll just add a new worksheet just to modify it. So add worksheet, and then we will add um, a worksheet to the workbook called WB that we loaded, and the worksheet would be called my new work sheet. Done, 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 boom. And finally, in order to actually review this in an Excel file, we have to save the workbook. So let's do save uh, workbook. It's pretty self-explanatory. Which workbook? WB. And what's the name of the file? New workbook. Something like that. .xlsx. And let me show you how simple this is. We've got no errors. We're ready to go. Let's check it out. Boom. Condition one is still there. And let's, do let's open it up. There is not another tab because I'm only manipulating a copy of it. When I bring that in, when I bring that into R, it is creating a copy of the Excel file and it's creating an object called WB. It loads that object and stores it in a variable called WB. It's a different object. It is not in real time modifying the Excel file that it pulled in. It's loading the workbook, but it's not modifying that particular work workbook. It is actually making a copy of it. Just an FYI, think about those. You won't run into problems right away with that, but keep that in the back of your mind if you do. And so our new workbook was created. That wasn't there before. Let's double click on that. And we have, well, it's on E10. That's, I'm pretty sure that's the way it was. Um, after I clicked on that tab anyways. Now, um, the highlighting is still there. Sheet one, it's on H10. So it captures, I mean, it is really duplicating what we have. And then we have a new worksheet down at the bottom here. So that really worked flawlessly. So that's how you can modify without ruining the workbook that you have, or if you wanna make copies of it and modify it. Very simple, very simple. Now, I told you I was gonna go on a little rant, which it's not really a rant, it's a good rant. Um, I appreciate you guys 
uh, getting me to a thousand subscribers and beyond. I'm now beyond a thousand subscribers. Um, I thought, oh, I'm, I'm on my way. I'm on my way. But I'm, I'm not quite there yet because I need more watch time. And in order to do that, I'm going to make you listen to me talk. No, I'm just kidding. But I don't want this video or this channel to, to be all about me trying to get monetized. But I do have another channel, right, that does talk about how I monetize. So I wanna just alert you that that's the reason why I talk about it is because the goal is I want everyone that learns any programming language or any skill to be able to you know throw it back onto YouTube or whatever platform you want and help other people out. That's the goal. Um, there is no manipulation in this. Everything is transparent as can be. So I appreciate that. Now, that being said, please subscribe if you want to keep up to date share this especially on like twitter and social media with some good tags that'll help me out these are very simple tutorials and there are tons and tons of competition for our tutorials now it's not really competition to me because um they're all amazing and we need them so this is just one more avenue one more method for you to learn i expect anybody to check out my videos and then go research other videos and continue on their path of whatever they want to learn um, everybody learns differently too. So, you know, some people, I, I think that most people in, in my, my little R channel realm, uh, are more of the, more of a business savvy type of person that wants to learn just the basics to help their day out, to automate a few things. You know, as you can tell already in this channel, I haven't really done a whole lot of statistics. Um, I would love to get into machine learning, but every time I try, I get I get hit with something where I, I just don't have the time to do it, but I will I will get into it and I will try to organize this in such a way that you can keep one path and uh, go you know learn that particular path. If you want to learn business tricks, go to the business uh, playlist. If you want to learn statistics, there's a statistics playlist. If you want to learn everything that I've ever posted, it's the absolute beginner's guide to R. So that's it. That's my little rant. I am sorry that I have to throw these in there once in a while, but for the most part, you know my channel by now. I don't really overdo it. So uh, leave your comments below, though, and join the Discord. If you've made it this far, join the Discord. Now, it may not be super active yet, and that's because we need more people to join. I can't help everybody out for two reasons. One, I don't have the time, and two, I don't necessarily know how to fix their, their issues. But the community together can do that. So Discord is a good way to do that. And we can talk on there almost in real time sometimes. So, all right. Have a good one, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.